had it all planned out. I mean, really, I knew this mountain and all of its details. I'd never laid a finger on the iconic Long's Peak, the crown jewel of Rocky Mountain National Park, and in my opinion, one of the most beautiful places in the world. This mountain was over 14,000 feet in altitude, or commonly referred to as a 14er, making it one of the tallest mountains in the United States. But I felt like I knew this mountain intimately through detailed planning. I'd spent two years thinking about climbing it and six months planning it all out. I'd researched topographical maps, studied websites with other climbers and their experience, called rangers to talk about the weather, and researched all the gear I needed to get to the top safely. When I close my eyes, I feel like I could reach out and touch it and think about all the sections and how I would accomplish it. I planned it out down to every last detail I could think of. So when it was time to put my plan into action, I set forth with three of my good friends, and we took the first step. After hours of hiking, everything was exactly as it should be. We were making great time, and everybody was in great spirits. There's only one thing I couldn't plan for, and that was the mountain itself. But Long's Peak had a plan of its own that day. so bad, right? I told my friends as words of encouragement to keep going. <laughs> But actually, it was that bad. So we had just stepped through what's called the keyhole, where you jump from one side of the mountain completely to the other, exposing you to different kind of weather. What we experienced when we got to the other side was 40 mile an hour direct winds and 50 to 60 mile an hour gusts. Can you imagine what it's like to be climbing for hours and have that wind hitting you the whole time? And with a gust strong enough, It can blow you right off the side of the mountain. We waited for about an hour, hoping the conditions would change. Nothing did. That's when we had to make the hard decision. We decided to turn around and head back down to the bottom of the mountain. We were within 1,000 feet of the peak. This was my first major mountain climbing experience, and it would end in failure. I remember how disappointed I was. There were tears in my eyes. But I wouldn't let my friends see it. After all that planning and preparation, to fail was devastating. I asked my friends, "Hey, is there the possibility we can try again the next day?" But when I looked at their faces, I knew that this one experience was probably enough for the trip. And they suggested a brewery tour, and I'm like, "Hey, I like a good brewery tour." <laughs> I remember leaving with a sense of something truly unfulfilled. But even though I had failed, I wasn't going to give up on my goal. So over the next year, I kept planning and training, always keeping that goal firmly within my sight. One morning, I woke up at 4 a.m. I was ready to train. I jumped on my bike and I headed off into the morning darkness. I was less than a half mile away from my house when failure would visit me once again. I flipped over the handlebars of my bike and fractured my left elbow. I considered myself fortunate because I had cracked my helmet in two, so things could have been much worse. But this would completely push my plans back. By mid-September, I had healed and gained strength and mobility back in my left arm. This was a great time to summit, but there was only one other obstacle in my way. My son was due to be born within weeks of my recovery. Now, my wife Elizabeth, she's very understanding and very patient with my mountain climbing hobby, we'll call it. But she said to me, "You know, Eric." I don't think it would be the best idea for you to be scaling a mountain if our son shows up a little bit early. Being the smart husband that I am, I instantly agreed with her, and thus closed the window for another attempt at Long's Peak. I thought to myself, you know, maybe this just isn't meant to be. This isn't my pathway. But every time I thought about the plan, it's, I could see myself and visualize myself getting there. And so I kept on. And the desire was burning inside of me. So when 2017 rolled around, there was no injuries or additions to my family to stand in my way. It was time to take the trip back and attempt again. So with a few modifications to my original plan, and this time only one friend to accompany me, we took the first step. 
Again, everything was going according to plan. This time, we planned to be at the keyhole a little bit earlier so we could take in the sunrise. When we stepped across the mountain this time, the conditions were completely different. There was only a nice five-mile-an-hour breeze, just enough to keep us cool while climbing. So we jumped into Long Peak's last 1,000 feet, the hardest part of it. We climbed and we toiled for hours until finally I would stand on top of my very first 14-er. It's hard to put into words. Thank you. Thank you. After three years and multiple failures, I would finally accomplish my goal. It's hard to put into words how this feels. You feel like you can do anything. You feel like you could conquer the world. See, the mountains have taught me some lessons for taking on life's challenging endeavors. First, you should always have a plan before you begin. That plan should help you to visualize success and will make accomplishing it far easier. But just having a plan will never get you to a summit. You have to have the courage to take the first step. Take a moment to think about a plan that you've had, something you're passionate about, something that you've maybe expressed to a close friend or a family member. Yes, there are always things that could stand in your way from accomplishing your goal. Even the best laid plans in the world can be thwarted by circumstances and uh, conditions outside of our control. There's only one thing that we always control, and that's how we react. I could have quit after I failed the first or the second time, but I didn't view these as failures. I viewed these as something much larger. These were simply moments on a journey that I have embarked on. Now, the journey is the amazing part. It's full of joy. It's full of twists and turns, and it's where the real work begins. See, my journey in the mountain is really just beginning. My plan is to accomplish the seven summits or stand on the highest places in all seven continents and attempt all 58 of Colorado's 14ers. I set this goal after longs. And since that time, I've become much better at planning, at training, and summiting. When I first started my journey, I thought it was all going to look like this. I shot this on top of Mount Elbert, the highest point in Colorado. I was the first one on the trail in the morning, and I swiftly moved to the top of the mountain. This is a story of conquest. This is a story of physicality. Mountain climbing was a sport, and I wanted to be an amazing performer. That was my plan. But not surprisingly, I would learn a new lesson on my quest to the highest places in the world. When the plane touched down on the tarmac, and I'd finished my more than 27-hour trip to Tanzania, Africa, I was ready to stretch my legs and get straight to the mountain. I entered into a small airport and met a group of complete strangers who would all attempt Kilimanjaro, the first summit that most everyone tries on their quest to the seven summits. After a gear check and a breakfast together, we went through villages and banana tree clusters to enter what's called the Machame Gate. This mountain would take seven days to reach the top and back and we'd reach a maximum altitude of 19,341 feet, almost one mile than I'd ever been in my life. In addition, this mountain takes you through five unique climate zones, each with their own challenges. On the first day, we traveled through the cultivation zone and the rainforest zone at the base of the mountain. The group learned an important phrase that day, pole pole, which is Swahili for slowly, slowly. That would come in handy much later on the trip. When we stepped into base camp after our first long day of hiking, local guides had another surprise for us. That was an amazing and rather unexpected moment. I mean, these were burly mountain men carrying packs who burst into beautiful song when we walked into camp. By the end, we had smiles on our faces and most of us were dancing along. Any thoughts of fear or doubt washed away if, if only for a moment. But then I realized something. 
This wasn't just a mountain climb. This is about immersing ourselves in a different culture, learning about its mysteries and its ways. In addition, I would get to know my fellow hikers. When you spend a week together doing a challenge like this, you get to know each other pretty well. One person sticks out in particular. When I first met her, she described herself as an extreme introvert. She was quiet. If you didn't engage with her, she would hike for miles without saying a single word. But I was curious. I wanted to learn more. She was a marathon runner. She'd gotten into the sport mostly for herself, but she also was concerned about her daughter's health habits and the path that she was on. She wanted to inspire her daughter to join her. And so they both got into marathoning together, and she changed her life. She was on this mountain to prove to herself that she could do something amazing. As we pressed on, I would get to know her more and more. And then she shared a secret with me. She said, you know what, Eric? I'm not so sure that I can make it to the top of this mountain. Then I shared a secret with her. You know what? I don't know if I have confidence in my ability either. It was nice to know I wasn't the only one. As we pressed on, her quiet dedication was inspiring to me and kept me going along the way. Upon the summit day, I got about two hours of sleep, and we began the final push to the top. We hiked for hours, and we braked along the way. It's amazing in these kinds of conditions how fast your body can change. You go from being hot to being freezing in an instant. You got really good at putting a coat on to shield yourself from the elements. We traveled on. Step. Step. Breathe. Step. Step. Breathe. Pole, pole. Thirteen climbers embarked that day. And when we were less than 1,000 feet from the, from the top, the team received a message. One of the climbers, my introverted friend, decided to turn around. My mind flashed back to that fateful day on Long's Peak. A feeling of despair and disappointment entered my body. I felt so bad for her. I couldn't imagine what she felt right now. The group pressed on. Step by step, inch by inch, getting closer and closer to our goal. Until finally, after days of climbing, I would stand together with a team and with friends on one of the highest places in the entire world. Again, that feeling, I felt like I could accomplish anything. I felt like there was nothing that I couldn't do. But this time, I had 12 other people to share it with who all felt exactly the same way I did. I congratulated everybody, and then I went over to survey the alien landscape that is Africa's ceiling. My mind started to wander. I thought about my friend again. I wonder what she was feeling. I wish she was here to experience this with us. When we got back down to high camp, she was in the main tent. I went over to her to express my sorrow. But amazingly enough, she had a huge smile on her face. She actually looked more chipper than I'd seen her in the entire trip. She looked at me and she said, I didn't need the summit. I came here and I accomplished what I needed to do. Think about it. She made it within a thousand feet of the highest peak in the world. How many people can say that? She showed more bravery, more courage, and more appreciation for the entire experience than any of us. And that's when she taught me the most important about, lesson about mountain climbing. You see, when I started climbing, and even when I landed in Tanzania, it was all about the peaks. Even though that is a great part of it, that's no longer my favorite part. It's the journey to the top that's actually the best part. The beauty of beholding nature, the people that you encounter on the trail, and the people you choose to climb with. It's about sharing pieces of your life in tents and on trails. And it's about watching others, beholding the beauty of the mountains. In fact, I met a friend who's just a little crazy in the head, just like me, who also wants to accomplish the seven summits. I look forward to standing in amazing places 
with a friend and a familiar face. <clears throat> I received a card from my coworkers before I embarked on Kilimanjaro. In it, there's lots of words of inspiration and a lot of things that encouraged me to get to the top. But there's one quote in here in particular that I carry with me on every trail. I really couldn't put into words when people asked me, like, why do you do it? But when I read this quote, it just kind of clicked and it made sense. A ship in port is safe, but that's not what ships are built for by Grace Hopper. I'm a ship that needs to be at sea. I'm a ship that needs to answer the call of the wild and go after the pioneering spirit and have a sneaking suspicion that the people in this room are also not meant for the harbor either. I want to encourage those of you to plan a trip to an amazing summit. For some of you, yeah, that might be a mountain. For others, that might be starting a business, taking a mission trip, going on an amazing trip to somewhere exotic, going on a sabbatical, running for office, or starting a family. Envision yourself succeeding and everything that you need to do, all the steps you need to take, the gear you'll need, the guides that will help you along the way to keep you on the pathway. And yes, you will need to prepare yourself to fail. Some people spend their whole lives saying, someday I hope to, or I always have dreamt of. If I had waited till I was really ready to climb my first mountain, I wouldn't have a single one to talk to you about today. So make a plan. Take the first step and embark on your journey. But make haste, my friends. Don't wait too long. Because if you do, you run the risk of leaving this world with a head full of plans and no scars to show for it. Thank you. <laughs>